Hey, get over here. We got markers to look at. Today, we're taking a look at the Uni PX30. These markers are pretty infamous in graffiti. People have been using them for years, and that's because they're great markers. On top of the silver, which is most classic, they come in a few other colors. And then we've also got some Uni PX20s to look at. These are the smaller siblings of the PX30s. So the silver Uni, or the chrome Uni, is definitely the most popular and kind of the most famous. These things are so amazing. But on top of that, we got some other colors, like gold, black, white, yellow, red, and blue. There might be legend of a pink one, but I wasn't able to get one. And then for the Uni PX20s, or the mediums, these are all the colors that I got. There's 15 colors in total. I was only able to get these few, but I'm quite sure that's gonna be more than enough for this video. They all come in this plastic wrap, which is super satisfying to crack open. I like to twist the cap and the base of the marker so it breaks in the seam and you can peel the plastic off. I think it's super satisfying. These markers on average for the broads, they're running about six bucks. If you're charged any more than six bucks, uh, you're overpaying. And then for the, the mediums or the PX20s, those are running about $3, two to $3. I picked my markers up from blankslaps.com because that's where I buy all my markers from. <laughs> People really like these markers. I'm sure if you know the name Weckman from Tag Machine, he went as far to say the best chrome marker. People would like really love these markers, especially that chrome. And I'm actually a super big fan of them too. Now I've got them all unwrapped. We're gonna take some look at the specs. So for the mediums or the Uni PX20s, they have a reversible bullet tip that's four millimeters wide and has a two millimeter tip. It draws about a two millimeter to a four millimeter line depending on how flared out it is. For the Uni Broad, chisel on one edge that's six millimeters by four and on the other side, eight millimeter circle. The Uni PX Broads aren't necessarily reversible but people do reverse them all the time and they're actually super fun to reverse. They're righty loosey, lefty tidy if you wanna open these bad boys up. The Uni paint markers are notorious for being pretty underfilled. They have a pretty good size capacity with a metal body. It can hold about 60 milliliters, but only holds about 20, meaning these markers will work for a little while, but you're gonna have to refill them eventually. If you take a look in there, you got a flow sponge. These are our pump action markers, which is why we should show them off. So here's the marker saturations. This is one of the best parts of these markers. They have a really nice coarse felt tip. So the marker saturations are always super duper satisfying. This is something you only ever get to enjoy once on your markers, so take some time now and really, really enjoy it. If you read the outside of the marker, it says it marks on most surfaces. It's an opaque oil-based paint marker, and on the side it has a cancer warning. So yeah, don't breathe this stuff in. As far as the paint goes in these markers, it's actually pretty high quality. Oil-based, right, and then it's been thinned out with xylene. Uh, Xylene is a neurotoxin, so it's dangerous and stuff. So use it in a very well ventilated area. Uh, I love Xylene based paints. I think Xylene based paints are some of the just highest quality. I really love Xylene as a solvent. Uh, so Xylene markers are normally just my favorite in general, but they are dangerous, so keep that in mind. It's also the reason why more and more markers are removing Xylene, like the pilots are removing their Xylene. The Marsh inks are, are Xylene free nowadays. These markers are great outdoor and indoor markers. They're pretty dang UV resistant, especially the uh, silver and the gold ones. The black one holds up pretty well too. The colors are pretty good. The yellow fades pretty fast, sadly. But besides that, they are pretty great outdoor markers. The Uni paint markers are oil-based, uh, so when you mix with them, you wanna be careful what you're mixing with. If you're using another you know, oil-based paint, it'll work great. Maybe xylene thin oil-based paint would be even better, it would just flow perfectly in these. I know the Magic Ink works pretty great in these, and a lot of alcohol-based paints and alcohol-based inks work pretty great in these. I haven't really experimented with other things. As always, if you're experimenting, pour a little bit of the Uni paint into a little cup, and then pour a little bit of whatever you wanna mix with into a cup mix them up and see if they kind of congeal. Because if they start to kind of make these solidified chunks, then it's not gonna run through your marker and it's gonna gunk up everything, which is no fun. Here's that silver saturation. I think this one's one of the most satisfying. So the silver one is definitely the thinnest paint of all of them, surprisingly. Whatever the metallic particles in the paint are, they're very, very fine. 
and they run super well through the marker. Because they're xylene based, that xylene is great flow value, and these markers seriously are so good. That silver is super opaque, but super duper reflective. The golds are pretty similar too. I'm not as much of a fan of the gold color. I think it could be a little bit more shiny, kind of lighter. I think the gold's pretty dark. Moving on to a painted piece of wood for a test surface. We're just writing with these markers and getting a feel for them and seeing how they perform on a painted surface. So this is the streak test. This is to see how much that paint streaks. Uh, the black one actually streaked quite a lot, even when it was really saturated, it started to streak. It's actually kind of the worst out of all of them. And you can see, even after being super saturated, it leaves a lot of really streaky lines. I'm pretty disappointed with it. The red's a little bit better. It does streak, but much less than the black does. And the lines after streaking are a lot better than the black one. The blue's a little bit worse than the red. It streaks a little bit more, but overall the lines after streaking are better than the red, which is weird. <laughs> I don't know how to perfectly explain that. The yellow one looks great. It's kind of hard to see here on this white board. Here's a little schmood smiley face just because I love him. Uh, it doesn't streak so bad. The yellow actually streaks a lot less than most of the other colors. And then we get onto the metallics and the metallics just don't streak. Uh, like I couldn't really get them to streak even when I was going really fast, um, which is awesome. Here's the white one, you can't, you can't see it. There, there really was no point, I just wanted to try it. This is all on a slightly textured painted surface and you can also see how reflective that silver is. It is so much more reflective than the gold. Oh, it is just truly such a good reflective. Here we're catching some tags on the stop sign to see how well they adhere to the surface of it. Uh, ignore the fact that you can't really see where I'm writing. Here are the close-ups so you can actually see it. On the shiny red, they're actually surprisingly opaque, which is really nice, especially that black and that silver look really good. Blue's a little bit thin, and I didn't show the yellow here, but the yellow was pretty dang thin, and so was the white. Onto a dirty, rusted surface, which is this shovel head, and they perform just as good. They really don't care about the rust and the dirt on the shovel. And here's cute old hit off to the beans out of the cans. Look them up on Instagram. They're a great bunch of people doing some really, really amazing movement. And uh, also this is the eye shovel. So uh, if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. <laughs> Onto this piece of glass. I'm practicing some black letter here. I've been working on black letter. I really enjoy tagging with it. These markers, because of the chisel, are actually super great for more of a calligraphy style and uh, they adhere really well to the surface of this glass, surprisingly. You'll see later, they actually hold on pretty dang well. The colors are really nice here. You can't really see that black because there's black behind it, but it actually is really solid. These markers perform really well, kind of on a lot of surfaces. That's another thing with mentioning is that these markers don't drip. So if you're really somebody who loves drips, these markers are not gonna be the markers for you. They really don't drip, and if they do drip, it's not from the nib, it's actually from the valve system will drip, and that's just obnoxious, it's not a good drip. That only happens if you're pushing down really hard while you're writing, but if you're just applying light pressure while you write and resaturating between letters when it gets dry, it works great. As always, the names in these videos are hit offs to all my friends or subscribers. So if you want me to write your name, what you gotta do is leave me a nice comment, be subscribed, and leave your name in your comment, and I'll choose a whole bunch of them and write it. Also, because I'm pretty small right now and there weren't a lot of people leaving names in the comments, I made an Instagram post uh, asking for names and I got a whole bunch. So a lot of these are actually names from Instagram. Now it comes to something a little more different. So they didn't have any light blue when I tried to buy, which is a shame because I really wanted a nice light pink and a light blue. So the pink looks great by itself. I love that cotton candy pink, but the blue is just too dark. So we're gonna crack them open again, remember, Righty Lucy. Make sure before you mix paints so you shake them up a whole bunch. And then I got this little jam jar to mix my paints in. And then these little valves, they kind of a pain, but you can wiggle them out, it's possible. Now it's time for some mixing. We're gonna pour in that white and then a little splash of blue. I'm gonna kind of experiment. I wanna get a nice light blue that matches my paint. That's one thing I really like about these is that the paints mix very well together. And so if you like making custom paints, you can make some really, really cool ones. Uh, here you can see I'm adding a little more white again to try and get it to a better color and then I'm adding all the white uh, because if I wanted, if I added all the white I figured I could add a little more blue to get it to the color I want. Putting the mixer balls in there too and then shaking this all up. A little screwdriver testing it and I really like that light pastel blue. I think it looks perfect. Pouring it back into the bottle. Uh, didn't spill it very much. It was a little bit but you didn't see it here. 
but just a little bit. But didn't spill very bad. And uh, adding those little shaker balls back in, you gotta make sure to put your shakers in, otherwise your inks will settle and you can't mix them back up. Pop the valve system back in. And then for the other marker, because there's not a lot of blue left, I'm refilling with some Soul Tip paint. This is from OTR and it's an alcohol-based paint and it works great in these valves. Now I'm testing my custom color mixes on this piece of glass and I love how these look. I'm so happy I was able to get a nice light blue even though they weren't selling any light blues at the time. Here's a little bit of a bonus technique for you. This is something you can do with a lot of uh, paint markers. If you get them really nice and wet, very highly saturated, and get your face real close to that xylene and blow really hard, you can create these little paint blows or these paint splatches. Uh, this is a little bit better for more artistic use. Uh, I could see you doing this at the end of a tag too. It would be kind of hilarious. If you don't want to see me write names, you can skip to this time right here. For the PX20s, they're much better for kind of artistic purposes. I don't like them very much for tagging. They'd be much better for making, uh, for drawing with or painting with. The PX30s or the Unibroads, these boys are just made for tagging. They seriously just kill it. They're great and you can get a lot of really awesome style with them. I really love the chisels on these. They're comfortable, they're not too thick, not too thin, and they create really nice lines. This house paint on this piece of wood is very grippy, which is why these are streaking so bad. Uh, a lot of other surfaces don't streak so bad. This is probably like worst case scenario for streaking and you can still see it handles pretty well. As far as pigmentation goes, they're already, they all are really well pigmented, right? There's not a lot of thin, it's not, it's not too thin. You can really see the colors. Uh, the silver and the gold just really stand out because of how shiny they are. They really are awesome. That yellow is really hard to see here. So my recommendation is if you plan to go out tagging, I'd get the broads. If you plan to do more sketchbook stuff or sticker work, uh, definitely get yourself the minis instead. Once again, I'm experimenting with some more black letter styles. I've really been enjoying this and uh, I hope to get better at it. But uh, I think there's a lot of potential here and I'm really enjoying it. So if you want a new hand style to work on, get yourself a black letter or a calligraphy course and start working on it. I think it's super duper fun. Now we're just doing a buff test. Uh, this is just normal bucket paint. Uh, it's Oops Paint from Home Depot. I didn't actually show the cover test later, but I'll just tell you. Uh, they didn't bleed through very much at all. The only bleed through was a little bit on the black, but even then you couldn't really see what it said. These are oil-based markers, so we're testing them on some paper because normally I don't really like oil-based on paper. They, they leave this kind of bleeding or this ghost effect, but uh, these ones don't, as long as they're not super duper juiced, because here you can see if they are super duper juiced, they do uh, drip a little bit and they leave that ghosting. Um, but besides that, they actually work pretty dang well. Um, catching another tag with that silver and the gold, so you can kind of see the pigmentation. On paper, the pigments are absorbed, so it becomes less shiny and kind of more of a matte shininess. Uh, we're trying to try and do a little sticker piece uh, using some multicolors, using the, the primary colors they have, and uh, they work pretty well. I actually really enjoy them, and I'm definitely gonna make some more stickers with them. Using a uh, magic ink marker to paint over, I messed up a little bit on my E, and then I had to go back over with it, and it actually looked totally fine. So you can see there's the final product, and they look pretty dang great. Next up, we're gonna test it on some destructive vinyl or some eggshell stickers, as they're better known. Mine were picked up from blankslaps.com. Use code KAIS for 10% off. If you use that code, it also helps me, so uh, highly appreciated. Get yourself some cool stickers or some cool markers. You can see the silver on the black looks super cool. Here we're using one of the mediums, for the PX20s, for a character instead of a piece, and they work super well. I actually prefer these for little characters or piecing than I do for tagging, like I've said a thousand times. And then here we're using our custom mixed to make a little Kai's cotton candy tag on the hollow. Just using this little scribble technique. I think it's super fun. I like this. I like the way it looks in the end. And then letting that dry, and we're going back over with the gold. Here's a random one. This is the shoe test. We're testing these on shoes. They actually work pretty great. They adhere to a lot of surfaces on the cotton fabric. They, uh, they kind of get absorbed into the surface, so they don't show up so well on the black one, but they show up pretty dang well on the white ones. Uh, so if you want to customize some shoes, uh, these will work for that too. I wouldn't say buy them to customize your shoes, but it's a little bonus if you want. <laughs> so in the end, they pass the shoe test. Uh, they, they work great for shoes. <laughs> they work pretty great on a lot of different surfaces, which is one thing that's super awesome about them, so they're very versatile. 
Here's the chem buff for testing them out. Top left is water, top right is weak alcohol, bottom left is stronger alcohol, and bottom right is acetone. Interestingly enough, the black doesn't even survive the weak alcohol. Uh, they all don't really handle too well against the stronger alcohol and acetone just removes pretty much everything. Now we're scratching them to see how well they hold onto the surface. This is on glass, uh, which is saying something because nothing really adheres to glass properly. But even then, they hold on pretty dang well. You can even see with a straight razor, I can't perfectly get it all off. They are an oil-based marker, so they take a little bit longer to dry and that leaves them more time to sink into the surface and really, really stick on. But as with all things, nothing survives the acetone. The acetone removes pretty much everything. For an overview of the markers, we're gonna take a look at the PX30s first. So my least favorite of them all is the black. The black was the weakest paint for whatever reason. Even cheap, weak alcohol was able to remove it. And on top of that, it streaked the most out of all of them. Next up are the white and yellow. The white is a little bit worse than the yellow. That's just because of the opacity. White is really never that good as a paint. The yellow's better, but it's still not quite as good. There's kind of a thin opacity to them. Red and the blue, these ones didn't streak as much and the opacity of them is a lot better. And then we have the gold. The gold handles super well. The only reason it's my second pick is just the color of it. I don't like. And then my number one is gotta be the Uni Broad Silver, the Uni Broad Chrome. This marker truly breathtaking. It's I think it's probably my favorite pump action valve. And on top of that, it's also my favorite chrome marker. It's just cream of the crop marker. So that's all I have to say about the uni broads. As far as the uni mediums or the PX20s go, they're all pretty even. There's nothing that really sets them apart. I didn't test all the colors. That's because I don't plan to tag with these. Uh, if you want to tag with them, uh, do whatever you want. I would say they're not very great for tagging. Whether that's black booking, stickers, practice piecing, whatever you want to do. If you want to paint on canvas with it. Uh, I think these markers are great for that. They're pretty great quality. There's nothing to run home about, but they are solid markers. So if you're looking for some medium sized oil based paint markers, these could be perfect for you. As always, hope you guys enjoyed. All my social links are in the description below. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Those are the three places you'll find me. Big ups to blankslaps.com for always supplying me with all my markers and sticker needs. Make sure to hit them up and use my code KAIS for 10% off and to support me a little bit. If you guys like this video, I have other videos like this. And new videos are coming out every Friday. I hope. Love you homies. I'll see you guys in the next one.